Um, actually, let me give you one more general comment before introducing. Thanks, Gwen. Is the sound a little better now? The purpose of this webinar series, the Instructors Forum is new this year, and our purpose is to convene practitioners from across California and highlight exemplary instructional practices. So regardless of the subject, that's the main focus. And today, we have Karen Ruiz from Visalia Adult School presenting. She's going to talk to us about um, some ways you can contextualize uh, instruction for the ABE and ASE classroom so that we're focusing on uh, workforce skill, improving workforce skill. If you're just joining us, I'll be working with you in the little chat pod. For now, I'd like to welcome Karen and hand the microphone over to her. Thank you, Karen. Thanks, Catherine. Can everyone hear me OK? Go for a yes. Yes, Catherine can hear me. OK. <laughs> Please feel free to just Type as much as you want into the chat pods. We'll have bigger chat pods for you to um, put your information in. But please feel welcome to just chat away. Type as fast as you can. And I will try to remember to um, give you plenty of time to type your answers in, to think first and then type your answers in. So please don't, don't rush and just type away, OK? for today. So today we're just going to talk a little bit about the research and background, kind of brainstorm classroom to workplace skills, how we're going to use, get those, they're called transferable skills. We're also going to talk about soft and hard skills. Um, we're going to identify some skills, some of those transferable skills, talk about what contextualized instruction is and how to apply that in your classroom, and then have a little wrap up and do an evaluation. Very quick day, me doing a lot of talking, or I may make Giza do it too because she was in TOT with me, so she knows this stuff as well as I do. <laughs> so hopefully by the end of this webinar, we want you to be able to identify ways to connect transferable skills from classroom to workplace and be able to assist your students in articulating and reflecting on those skills that they learn in the classroom and then how those skills then apply to the classroom. Oh, my sound is cutting in and out. Okay, let me see. I'm going to pull the computer closer to me, hopefully not turn myself off. Is that a little better? I'm getting private messages from Catherine. Please, uh, anytime, let me know if, if my sound goes funny. Because to me, I just sound like me. I'm still a bit out. Hmm. Is that a little better? We still kind of going in and out. Okay. Well, keep me posted. Let me know. Oh, okay. So, um, let's go on from here. So, we just want to give you kind of a taste of this. Of course, there is a larger class that you can take, but we just wanted to focus on what contextualizing workforce skills is. Because as, as this slide points out, this has become a major talking piece for adult education, but also for the state of California. And according to these studies here, the academic basic skills and job-specific knowledge are necessary. These are necessary for jobs, but they're not su su sufficient for success in California's economy. So right now, our workforce, they need those academic basic skills, but they also need that job-specific knowledge. And right now, this is not something that our, our workforce really has. So employers specifically are asking for reading and writing and math skills. Those are those foundational skills. But uh, they're also looking for basic workforce skills. And they're looking for workforce skills that can be learned in the classroom and transferred to the workforce. 
So many of these skills are already practiced in the classroom, but need to be articulated by teacher and student as workforce skills. We do this already in our class, but maybe our students can't go into a job interview or a job review board and actually articulate that they are accomplishing, practicing, and using these skills. These skills need to be taught in the context of the workforce. So the workforce skills need to be taught in the context of the workforce when we teach them in our classes. Next one. So this is just a list of some of the skills that are required for the fastest growing service occupations in California as cited in 2008. And this is you know, solely for Los Angeles County, but I would say that even in, in Tulare County where I live, which is middle of the Central Valley, this is pretty similar as to the fastest growing service occupations, being the custodians, wait staff, food service, home health aid, and nursing aides. So the skills that people are really looking for are the skills of being able to listen well and manage your time and monitoring, monitoring your performance and being able to comprehend work documents that they read and um, effectively talking to others and then teaching those jobs to others. So these all here, the skills on the left, these are transferable skills. And when we think of a student in our class, we think of somebody that already practices these skills. A model student would practice in our classroom listening well, and managing their time, and monitoring their performance, and being able to comprehend whatever documents we're bringing to them, um, being able to talk to others and converse with others and relay information, and then assisting and helping their fellow students. So we may have students that are able to do all, any and all of these skills in our classroom, but then if we're not articulating that these are workforce skills as well, they may not be able to articulate their abilities in a, in a, a job review or in an interview. Okay? So what does this mean for us? Here's the scary part. So. We're not going to change the curriculum. We're not going to become a work workplace expert. And we're not asking you to feel more overwhelmed. We're not asking you to change what you do and add new components and, and you know, do add more things to your to-do list. What we want you to do is make students aware of the transferable skills that they are already practicing in your program and adapt your instructional style to further contextualize learning for the workplace. We want you to integrate transferable workforce skills into your class and that can be successfully done by simply raising awareness of what you are already doing and incorporating instructional skills, not new curriculum. The goal is to raise awareness of current classroom practices and attitudes that are already relevant, that are also relevant in the workplace. Okay? So, I have chattered at you for a smidge. Let's go over here. There's an itty bitty question at the top of this huge pod. Giza, you may come in and speak. I'm going to give you the mic in just a sec. But at the very top, it says, what are some of the skills that students take away from the classroom to the workplace? And in the other one, we already had some examples of listening well and comprehending documents and time management. What are some other skills that students learn from you that they could take into the workplace? And I'm going to give you the mic, Giza. Okay, I've granted you mic access. Make sure you click the uh, hands-free lock down at okay. the bottom and you can talk. Um, I just want to say before I begin that I have to leave at about 4.30 because I have to get to my evening class. I should have told you that earlier, but um, I'll be with you for a while. Oh, um, that's fine. One big area I think is communication okay. and communicating in a way that other people can understand, asking questions, saying things clearly. And I think uh, um, that's a really big area. And um, I explain why I, I ask people to 
speak in full sentences um, and answer in complete sentences because that's really essential for the other person understanding what you're talking about and so forth. So I think communication is one area that isn't mentioned here. Too. Well, it, it is. Talking to others to convey information effectively. Yeah, it's needed at ab absolutely every job. So we stress that a lot. Organization yeah. is another one I don't see here, is it? Monitoring your own performance, but also organizing your work. Why do we have to keep a binder? Why do we have to put things into sections so we could find them easily and so forth? Students resist that, but it, uh, we're getting there. Yes, and it, they would have to do that in the job place, that you know, the time cards go here. And the mm -hmm. you know the work log goes here, and the uh, whatever else you know. It all no, yeah. not right now. Thank you, Giza. Do you have anything else? Okay, I'm gonna un un I'm gonna un mic you. <laughs> so these look really good so far. So social skills, communication. I saw a couple time respect. I saw a couple time. Uh, independent learners, absolutely. Willing to peer tutor, definitely. Prioritizing, encouraging one another. Barbara, do you have a mic? Yes, we are certainly going to get more information on contextualizing through adapting our teaching style. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I saw your other comment. Is that why your hand was raised? Being a good listener, yes, definitely. Yes, that's right. Yes, we are certainly going to get on get more information on contextualizing through adapting our teaching skills. Absolutely, absolutely. We're gonna brain brain uh, brainstorm some ideas a little on. So absolutely good. Being a good listener, being open minded. I remember over the summer we talked about appropriateness in general. Appropriate. Uh, Social skills, appropriate conversational skills, appropriate dress, um, appropriate words to use, uh, appropriate clothes to wear, you know, just a being appropriate to the scenario in general. Good. Whoop, being a good listener, being open minded. Good. Yes, appropriate language is a big one, big one. Um, you know, you go into your local Starbucks or your local Peep Coffee and what have you, and there's, I know in my area, there's a big difference between the language they use in the coffee houses that are kind of, you know, a little more upscale, whereas you go into, say, the McDonald's or the Burger, Burger King, and the language is completely different. And uh, the one that burns me the most is if you go into the mall and you go into some of the kids' kind of teenage stores, and the only thing that the uh, the gal working behind the counter says to you is that'll be 19.99, and then she goes off to go talk. Yeah, as she's ringing up your order to talk to her friend. Yeah, why not to be texting? Exactly. Talk to her friend about oh my gosh, the night before, and like he totally likes me, but he wouldn't like talk to me and. Okay, ma'am, it's 1995, and then like, oh my God, blah blah blah. So, appropriate language, appropriate conversation, appropriate attitudes, actually, absolutely. Nonverbal communication. Ooh, that's good. Hi, Marty. <laughs> Welcome. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, so what we were talking about, all of those things that we were talking about. How do I post an answer to the question? Oh, I was going to have you go into the big into the big pod, but you can also post in the bottom barber. That's fine. I can see both of them. So, I'm sorry, my kids are running around like mom's talking to herself. What's going on? <laughs> sorry. Okay, so um, this 
layout here, this talks about soft skills and all of the all of these suggestions you had about conversation skills and social skills and how to carry yourself and how to act in front of others, those are all soft skills. How people relate to each other, interpersonal and connection and communication skills. Okay, so these um, are all transferable skills. That means that these are skills that your students can learn in the classroom or in any other situation and then utilize them in a different situation. I mean, we teach our kids at home how to behave so that when we go out in public, they know how to behave so we don't have to give them the death look, which I'm going to start giving my kids in just a minute. Um, a student can cooperate as a team member during group work in the classroom and with a fellow worker on a job or at home completing a list of chores. As educators, we need to make these skills more explicit. So all of these skills here, not only do we want our students to practice them, but we want them to know and become aware that they are using these skills and then utilize language to explain their ability to use these skills during a job interview or performance review. So I know that my students, for example, they, they know that they often work in a team. We work in groups and in teams all the time, but they need to have the practice and the language to know that when they go for a job interview and the interviewer says, tell me a little about yourself, tell me some of your strengths and weaknesses, they can say, I work very well in teams, or I have worked in groups before, or I like to work with others. I work well with others. Okay, so that's kind of what we're talking about doing. Next one is hard skills. And hard skills are technical knowledge and skills that one needs to perform a specific job. These also include the foundational skills such as reading, writing, and math. These are easy to observe skills. They're most of the foundational skills are there, technical knowledge and skills. So technical things like, you know, welding a pipe or operating machine or um, drawing blood. These are all hard skills. So you need to learn these, but they are only utilized in a specific scenario, okay? I, I would hope that you're not, you know, well, I guess in some, in some instances you'd be operating machines at home as well as, as in, the, in the garage, okay, using computers in different areas. But you're not going to take your skills with what you've learned on the computer and apply it to, you know, how to read a book or or anything else. They're specific to the, the task at hand. Okay, So this is the difference between soft skills and hard skills. So you, this says here, you can have, this is the part that I like the most, the blue part. It says you can have all the technical expertise in the world, but if you can't sell your ideas or get along with others or turn your work in on time, You'll be going nowhere fast. And this is from Peggy Klaus, who is the author of The Hard Truth About Soft Skills. And I'll give you an example of this that I shared with the group over the summer. Um, what about learning to create a resume and fill out a job app? So those, I would say, are kind of foundational skills and would certainly be kind of considered a hard skill, Kevin. But um, I think that the two kind of tie together, that you certainly do need those hard skills, like being able to read the resume and understand the resume and fill out the application. But after you've completed that resume and after you filled out the application, if you can't hold a conversation with the interviewer, it's not really going to matter what you have put in the resume if you're not a team player and if you can't work with others. So I hope that kind of helps. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, okay, the uh, my dad had used the same computer guy for years, and he's a private contractor. He works out of his home. He's a computer genius. Um, can fix any problem, debug anything, and uh, he also has a son, my our computer guy, 
And uh, I love our computer guy. His name is Dave. He is awesome. Dave is the sweetest man in the world. I can call Dave up anytime and say, Dave, help. My computer is doing this. And I got the blue screen with the things that are flying around. And I can't get my, my important CalPro papers out of my computer. Help me. And Dave can certainly help anytime and is gracious and very kind and very gentle. When I said there's like things that are flying that look like flowers and they blink like the stars, but I don't know what it means. Very patient. His son is equally intelligent. And I came one day to drop my computer off. And Dave was not there, but his son was there. And he said, well, tell me what the problem is. I said, I don't know. There's something with the blue screen and the code at the bottom, but I couldn't get it. And he said, you'd be amazed how many stupid people can't fix their stupid computers. Just leave it here, and I'll take a look at it later. My dad will be back in a couple of hours. So that is soft skills versus hard skills. <laughs> you need the soft skills or the hard skills don't mean anything. I know! <laughs> so I didn't say anything to Dave because I know Dave has, he's very patient with his 35-year-old son that lives at home who's working out of his dad's garage. So I didn't say anything, but I know now that when I, when I call Dave, I always ask, so Dave, are you going to be home? When can I drop a computer off with you, Dave? Dave, do you want to come to my house and pick up my computer, please? So it's all about that relationship of having strong, soft, and hard skills. Okay? So let's move on. Oops. Oh, I'm sorry. I, mi I missed one. Wait a sec. So this is transferable skills. So these are our portable skills, and those are the soft skills. Okay, so those transferable soft skills are portable, and you can take them from your job, from your classroom, from work you do at home. Okay? Okay, let's move on to this. Okay. So I have these slides here, and this is what I would like you to do in here. If you would go, please, into each of these pods and just kind of think about what this would look like. Type in for me a skill that maybe your students have practiced in your class that they have done this before. So example of participated. Um, I participated in the conversation about cooking tamales today. Okay. So just kind of give examples of how your students, if you were one of your students, what they could say using these top keywords up at the top, which are some soft skills, what they could say in an interview. Uh, I achieved a 236 on my CASAS test. Okay, I'm going to pop through in these pods and see if you can be your student and Explain what you have done in your class using the word listened, participated, achieved, explained, finished, and prepared. Good. I listened to the teacher explain exponent. Oh my goodness. The math. I have listened to and followed directions from my instructions from my group leaders. Good, Barbara. I listened to the correct pronunciation. Good. I passed my GED test. Yay! I explained why I would be a good class manager. Awesome. Very good. I participated in a discussion about the Israeli-Arab conflict. Wow. 
Very good. I passed my chapter test. Good. I have prepared for my entrance test to college. Good, Christine. Good. I explained the Dia de los Muertos question to my class. Good. Uh-oh. Good. I thought about and expressed my opinion about a proverb that was on the board today. Good. Finished. Finished is hard. Let's see. Finished. Uh, I finished. I finished my job ready portfolio. Good morning. Uh, I finished. Yeah, I finished my homework. Good. Here's one. My kid, my my kids, my little moms, my ESL moms. I finished the level two standout grammar challenge book. And for my concurrence, I finished the first three chapters of U.S. history B before midterms. Good, geez. I informed the teacher I would be gone today. Good. Branches. Oh, yes. I explained the three branches of government. Good. I prepared my resume for typing into the resume wizard. Good. Okay. So we have very good... So your students, if they were you, could certainly explain the things that they have done in your class. And so then, these same statements, they could, not only could they use, they could use these statements during their job review or job interview, but they could also turn them into I can statements. So, I achieved the 236 on my CASAS, I passed my GED test, I passed my chapter test, I passed my time practice GED test. So these are all about tests with achieves. So we could make those I can statements, which kind of for, a, if you think about them for a job interview, those are statements that, you know, I could do this in the future because of what I have done. So they could say, I can take tests. I feel comfortable taking tests. Um, all of these with participated. I participated in group presentations, I interviewed well, I participated in the discussion, the conversation. So that can be an I can, which is like what I can do for you, future employer. I can participate in conversations with others. I can participate in group conversations with others. So to specifically let your students Know and practice, now that we've done this, look at what I've done, look at what we've done, how would you say this to an employer? How would you say this to an interviewer? You could, how would this help you get a job? Just kind of to add a little extra bit of conversation after a job or a task has been completed or after a skill has been practiced or witnessed. So we're not adding huge components, we're just adding small components. Okay, we good? Okay, I prepared for my GED essay. It was scary. Okay, so here's the next section. With this in mind, we've kind of looked at these different skills of listening or participating or achieving, explaining, finishing, preparing, um, practicing, cooperating. If you could explain here in this big pod 
how would you or how do you teach your students to identify the skills that they have learned in class? Now, I'll give you an example. I have in the morning, I have a multi-level ESL class. We are excessively multi-level because I have beginning literacy students and I have students that have their high school diploma. Um, so I have, I have everybody. I have about 26 students that come regularly. The way we identify the skills that we have learned is instead of writing down an agenda for the day that says, you know, today we'll practice verbs in the past, present, and future continuous form, I put it as an I can statement. So our agenda on the board is an, a series of I can statements with blanks in front for checks. So our one for today says, I can, it says, I understand past, present, and future continuous verbs. It says, I can write correctly past, present, and future continuous verbs. I can use correctly past, present, and future continuous verbs in conversation. And so that's our theme for the week. And every single day, I talk to the students and I ask them, I pick a few out and say, so, Maria, today, can you use past, present, and future continuous verbs in a conversation? And Maria will have to tell me, yes, I can, or no, you know what, teacher, I cannot today. No, I cannot, but maybe tomorrow. So for them to just consistently, every single day at the end of class, know that we are going to talk about yes I can or no I can't statements, it kind of gets it in their heads so they're used to talking about what they can or cannot do. It's not a huge piece, it takes about five minutes at the end of the day. At the beginning of the day they write it in their journal, just our, our little checkoff list, either the beginning of the day or the beginning of the week, depending on whether or not it changes. So it's a really quick thing, just so they have kind of comprehend. My goal is that they will look back through their notebooks when we hit the EL Civics that speaks about um, jobs and job interviews. And when they tell me, teacher, I've never had a job, I don't have any job skills, we're going to go back through those lists and say, but look what you said you can do. I can use this verb in a conversation. I can fill out an application form. I can have a conversation with my, you know, my, my child's parents. So that's our quick little thing. I'm going to see, um, Giza, I'm going to pick on you because you're the only one with a mic. Can you um, come on the line and let me know, have you used any of these, what would you use in your class to help them kind of identify their skills? There we go. Okay. Um, you know, I haven't you transitioned to cry. that. I'm still verbalizing it for them at this point. So when they have a job in the classroom, I'll say, Catherine really did okay. well today in um, communicating what was needed. Her questions were very clear. Or so-and-so remembered uh, to organize the papers uh, as part of her job. or. Um, uh, the announcement about the cell phone was was made well today and clear. Everybody followed. So I haven't jumped into that next step, but this is a really good idea, I think. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. It, it really seems to kind of help them. And even my very, very beginner basic basic students, if I call on enough before them, they seem to kind of get the idea with some assistance mm -hmm. from the person next to them is, do you understand this? And they say, no, I don't understand this. So when I get to them, they say, no, teacher, I cannot use blah, blah, blah. So, um, and, and often we get to, yes, I can. Yes, I do understand the days of the week in English. So yeah, it's, it's very simple and very quick. But I, I do like the jobs. We also do our jobs, too. And that's, that's a good way to get into it. Good. Thanks, Giza. Oh, I like these ideas.
Good. How can it be applied outside of the class? Good, Barbara. Yeah, either in the job or just in the neighborhood because those soft skills, they can be used, utilized not only in the job and not only in school, but also in the neighborhood, also when they're speaking to their kids' uh, teachers, when they're out, you know, in the community. So definitely, yeah. Good, Gwendolyn. I like this. Just think about every what they're doing on a regular basis. I come to school on time every day. I listen to the teacher. I turn in my homework when it's due. And then to just now to take this to the next level and say these things that you do for school, you know, you can, these are things you would do for a job. And ask them, are these things, how is I come to school on time every day? How would that be applied, that skill be applied to a job? I listen to the teacher. How would that be applied to a job? I turn in my homework when it's due. How is that similar to a skill you need for a job? Good. I have a bunch of people still typing, so I'm not going to scooch on. It is. It is definitely practice for life in general. And the key thing for us as educators, as Californians, as workforce skills being the new big talking point, it's important that not only is it practice for life, but that our students know that what they're doing in the classroom is practice for life. I would love to be able to get my high school concurrent students who are 16, 17, and 18 years old to understand that what they are doing in the classroom, what their wretched, awful, mean-spirited, horrible teacher is making them do in the classroom is actually practice for real life. And it's a lot, it's a lot easier to do it with, to, to have my ESL students understand that than my high school students understand that. Oh, Marnie and Kevin are typing up a storm. Yes, oh my goodness, my high school students. Oy vey. <laughs> Oy vey. High school students. Okay, I'm going to let Mari and Kevin. Yeah, Kevin, very. I'm going to type something real quick. Um, anything else you can think of, folks? You know, I'm finding that the young 18 and 19-year-olds who have mic. never been in the okay. workforce, Go ahead. but just in school, are really fine, uh, are, are a hard sell because they don't make the connection that I'm trying to make for them out of their own experience. So they kind of look at me and laugh when I say, would you do that at a job? How would you behave? What would happen if you did that at a job? They don't connect those two. So does anyone have any ideas about how to communicate that to someone who's never been in the workforce? Um, I would suggest maybe getting somebody to come in and speak to them. Mm -hmm. um, maybe someone from, you know, a general manager from McDonald's or the guy who owns the soccer shop or, you know, if you get a, somebody from a place that they, they find interesting. You know, ask them, what do you want to do once you get your diploma? What are you going to do with it? Where are you going to work? And then from that, um, from that, then they find somebody mm -hmm. that, 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 okay, that, that's, that's an excellent that's idea. About, would I hire you? And I have older people in the class who really just, you can see they're nodding with, agreement because they understand, okay. but um, not all of them could communicate and teach it to the younger ones. But I might try that, even with some of the people in the class who have been working for many years. Mm -hmm. 
Giza, can oh, you just repeat um, your my, question? My comment more, uh, and question was that for the very young 18 and 19 year olds who have never actually had a job, they've just come from high school, it's a very difficult sell. They don't make the connection that keeping a notebook and being organized is a skill that you will need on, at, on the job, that communicating properly, that informing the teacher of your lateness or you're leaving early or you're going to be absent, all those kinds of things are important because they train you for the workplace. They don't make that connection. The older people understand when I say something like that because they've been in the workplace. So my question was, how do you communicate that to young people who haven't had that experience of being in the, uh, of having had a job? We're going to talk about contextualized instruction, which is using, you know, real life materials or real life documents to mm -hmm. teach skill. Well, your real life material would be somebody from the community that did their job. Um, be it the guy at the, at the, the auto shop. So that would be. Why should I hire? You? Yeah, why should I hire you? Exactly. Um, and I know it's difficult because I know that the kids, the kids. Sorry, Christine, I'll get my head. To the, please let me know if anyone else is Aaron, losing my sound. I know Catherine. I interrupted okay. Catherine. Oh, There's a, a few people who are saying um, your sound is breaking my up. My so you want to double check. And I know it's going and going Just and going settings. about. I don't understand why I have to go to Maybe school, and I don't understand why I have to do this. I don't understand why I have to, you know, do this stuff. I'm not going to be a biologist. I'm not going to be a history, a history teacher. Yeah. Okay, that's it's. This is Catherine. Yeah. It's good to know where and what type of sound problems there are. There's a little kind of audio setup thing that um, sometimes it helps to rerun that. To takes my just head. a minute. <laughs> Let's see if I can make the computer closer to my head. For a while I thought it was just on turn my head tip my and I was looking on the laptop and the sound Does that help a little perfect, better? So maybe something shifted. Thanks for your patience. Okay. Feel free while you're um, waiting this minute to type more yeah. in the um, main chat pod here about how you teach students to identify these skills that they've learned in class. Yeah, I think or help um, we had three mics going on at the skills. same time, or two mics going on at the same time. It was picking. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, guys. So um, with my niece. Um, and we see that little microphone, uh, not microphone, that little loudspeaker icon next to our names moving. Uh, it may mean yeah, that the I see person Marnie is still testing the in audio here. setup wizard. So even so, if we can't um, hear the machine, my niece that did not up. understand so again, thanks for bearing with us. how important school was and how important it was for her to we stay focused on school and stay focused bopping out of the room and back in if need be. I'm okay. I'm okay. Can uh, Thanks, Catherine. The rest can you hear me? me okay? Okay. Looks like again. Go right ahead, Karen. Can you hear me now? Okay. Catherine, can you hear me okay? I'm wondering if Catherine's the only one who can. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like down in the bottom. Okay. Oh, here we go. Marnie's been typing for a long time. Let's see. Question of the day for my student. What motivates you to do good work on the job? Good. I like to learn new skills and receiving praise. Good. 
Yeah, I know Maya, new, younger people, they're thinking it's stuff that they won't, don't want to do. And my niece was just like that. She wasn't going to be a biologist. Why do I have to do biology? Flunked it three times. Wasn't going to be a history buff. Why do I have to go to history class? And I tell you, the only thing that got her on the ball was she got pregnant. And um, she is now 17 and a single mother, and she is making up high school.